Hi, my name is Jess. Welcome to Books Fast Bedtime. Today we are going to be doing a huge book haul. I don't even know how many books I have. Let me count them really quick. I think I have like 26 books to talk about. So I last did a book haul in May and I think I've done like a couple unboxings and like reading vlogs and stuff. So I've hauled some books, but this is probably mostly going to be like a cumulative book haul um, from like June onwards. So I've had a couple months to acquire these books. I also had my birthday in August. So some of these are from my birthday, but anyway, let's just jump into it. I have no idea in what order I bought these books. I don't know what order I acquired them in. So this is going to be kind of a mess, but that's okay. I watched Elena the Great's book haul the other day and she organized things by genre. So that's what I'm going to do because I don't have a better way to organize them. So thank you, Elena. I'm going to copy you. Sorry. So first we are just going to jump in the thrillers that I have acquired. So the first I have in my stack here is The Night Swim by Megan Golden. I'm not going to give really long summaries for these books. Otherwise we'll be here forever. But the main character of this book is a popular podcaster and she's asked to cover this controversial rape trial in this town um, and so she goes to this town to like interview people and research this case and I think she ends up getting involved in a lot of other stuff in like this tangled web of this town. I don't really know. It sounds really good. I love true crime podcasts and I like books that feature podcasts so I'm very excited to jump into this one. The next book I have is A Good Marriage by Kimberly, Kimberly McCrate and I think this is like a legal thriller and it's following our main character who I believe is a lawyer and she gets a call from a friend. His wife ended up dead at the bottom of the stairs and so he's obviously the first suspect. I think he asks her to represent him and I think it ends up making her take a closer look at her own marriage or something. I don't know. I think I'm going to read this as well as Night Swim in a reading vlog in a, soon in a couple weeks so I will talk more about it there and my thoughts. I also have acquired A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson as well as Good Girl Bad Blood by Holly Jackson. This is like a companion series kind of. It follows the same characters but it's like a different case in this book I believe. Um, I have read this one already. I really loved it. I gave it five stars. I think it's going to be one of my favorites of the year. Um, this series follows this girl named Pip and in this first book Pip has this like senior capstone project to complete and she decides to do her project on the murder of this girl in her town that she went to high school with like five years ago. Um, she doesn't believe that the correct killer was accused and so she wants to try and solve this mystery. This book was so freaking good. The audiobook is so good. That's how I ended up consuming this one. It is full cast, full production. I just can't stop gushing about it. I know I've already gushed about it in other videos on this channel, but I love it so much and I just want everybody to read it. And then this is the sequel. I have no idea what the case is that in this one, but I have heard that it is very good and lives up to being a sequel to A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. So I'm very excited to read this one and hopefully I will get to it soon. I also got The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. My lovely friend Naima sent me this for my birthday. Thank you so much, Naima. I love you. You're the best. I believe this book is about this lady whose neighbor ends up being a vampire and he's like killing all of these children and the police are just like writing it off. She has already like befriended him and invited in him into her home by the time she realizes like that he's a monster and so I think she has to figure out how to stop him. Um, I think that's what this book is about. I've seen it all over bookstagram. I haven't really heard it talked about on booktube a lot but I am very excited to get to this one. This is honestly such a beautiful freaking book. Like it is so gorgeous. I got one by one by Ruth Ware. I've actually heard terrible reviews about this one so um, I hope that I will not be in the majority and that I'll end up really liking this one. This book is about this um, like corporate retreat to this resort in the French Alps. Everything's fine but then an avalanche happens and cuts them off from civilization and so they are there waiting to be rescued. Tensions are running high and I think they start disappearing one by one. This book sounds great. I love stuff like isolation thrillers so I think this sounds really good. I'm excited to get to it. I've only read one Ruth Ware book in the past and I didn't love it. I have heard that her more recent ones are better so that's why I just went ahead and bought this one but apparently people don't like it so I don't know. I will see. I will read it and let you know. <laughs> I also have Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. This is a haunted house mystery following our main character Maggie who has really been haunted by her father's book of this house that they grew up in that he claims was haunted. She really doesn't believe the events in this book because she has no memory of them. So when her father dies she goes back to this house to try and find out the truth. I have already read this one but it will be in an upcoming reading vlog that actually was probably out already so I really liked this one. I thought 
feels good. And we also have Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. This is a gothic horror and it follows our main character Noemi as she goes to visit her cousin and her brother-in-law and his family in this big old mansion and gets a lot more than she's bargained for. There's a lot of weird stuff going on in the house and she has to figure out what the heck is up. This one was really good. It was also really weird, very atmospheric. I definitely would recommend but it also is like not the best book I've ever read but it was good. I do have one nonfiction book in this pile and that is The Kabul Beauty School by Deborah Rodriguez. This is a story about this woman who moves to Afghanistan I believe with her husband. He's in the military or something. She ends up opening the Kabul Beauty School and this school trains Afghan women to be beauty technicians and to start supporting themselves and gain some independence to help them kind of rebuild their lives. This was kindly given to me by my lovely friend Becca for my birthday and I'm very excited to get to this one. She highly recommended it and it sounds super interesting. Can't wait to pick this one up. Next I'm going to talk about this stack of fantasy stuff that I have. I believe all of this is YA but the first book I have here is American Royals by Catherine McGee. This book was kindly given to me by my lovely friend Kirsten over at Kirsten's Corner. She sent this to me for my birthday and thank you so much Kirsten. I really appreciate it. Kirsten and Mare really love this book and really want me to read it so I'm very excited to do so. It's definitely been on my radar since it came out and it basically follows this alternate universe America where we have a royal family instead of a presidency and our main characters are a part of that royal family and I think it's just like a light fluffy like drama rom-com kind of story and I'm very excited to get to it and hopefully I love it as much as they do. And next you probably already know this but I do have the Selection Trilogy. Um, this is Selection. It's the first book. The Elite is the second book and the one is the third book. I have a reading blog where I read all three of these. I liked the first one, didn't really enjoy the second two. This is basically about another dystopian America where there's a mo monarchy. Um, in order to pick the princess they have this uh, reality show that's like The Bachelor where they bring in all of these girls and they eliminate them one by one until they have the new princess that the prince has fallen in love with and wants to marry. And our main character America gets selected to go to this selection bachelorette thing. Yeah. <laughs> so this is like a light fluffy fun story. I didn't love it because there was a lot of like hypocrisy and stupid stuff going on and for being a dystopian world it didn't have any world building in it so I struggled a little bit with that kind of stuff but overall this is a fun series. A lot of people love it. Not my favorite but I own them. Honestly I might own all these. <laughs> Does anybody want them? I also got Girl Serpent Thorn by Melissa Brashadoust. I don't know if I pronounce Bashadoust. Bashadoust. Bashardoust. Bashardoust. I do not know how to pronounce your name, ma'am. I'm sorry. But this is a fantasy with a female female romance in it, which is the only reason why I bought it. Couldn't tell you anything else about it. Oh, I guess our princess is like poisonous to the touch. I don't know. I got it because it's gay. <laughs> And I also got another copy of Call Down the Hawk by Maggie Stiefvater because I lost my other one on an airplane. So I have this new beautiful one, which is good. So I will definitely want to reread it before the next one comes out. This follows Ronan from the Raven Boys series. Um, it's like a spin-off series and he is doing some stuff. I don't know. <laughs> It's a fun series. I love Ronan with my whole heart. He's my favorite character from the Raven Boys series. So hence this book. I don't know what else to say. This is from my mom for my birthday, so thanks mom. I don't think she watches my videos, but thanks mom. <laughs> And then last in my fantasy category is obviously the Percy Jackson series. Me and some of my best bookish friends are hosting a Percy Jackson read-along. Live show for The Lightning Thief was on October 11th and our live show for The Sea of Monsters, I think it's on November 1st and it's going to be on Regan's channel. So definitely go check that out. Um, read the Percy Jackson series with us. This is my first ever reread of the series and a lot of people are reading it for the first time. A lot of people are reading it for the 500th time. So we have all range of Percy Jackson fans reading with us and it's gonna be so much fun so definitely check that out but I did get this series and I like these like pretty paperback editions honestly I wish I had hardcovers because the spines crack but that's okay. Next I have actually quite a little stack of historical fiction. I haven't been reading a lot of historical fiction recently but there's been some good ones from book of the month so I have been snapping some of those up. Um, but the first one that I want to talk about is The Death of Vivek Oji. So this book is the story of Vivek Oji who is a Nigerian boy and I think he like is discovering his gender identity or something but it's following his life and his struggles up to the point 
point where he ends up dead on his mother's doorstep. Honestly, the description of this is pretty vague, but it really sounds beautiful. It's quite short and I'm very excited to get to this one and think it's going to be beautiful and heartbreaking. At least I hope that it is. And cover is like one of the most beautiful things ever. I love it so much. I also picked up The Great Believers by Rebecca Mackay. This book follows two characters, Yale and Fiona. Yale is an artist and he is like doing something with his art. Um, he's a gay man in the 80s and a lot of his friends are affected by the AIDS crisis. Um, I think his partner or friend Nico ends up being affected by the AIDS crisis as well. Fiona is Nico's sister and we're following her later on when she goes to Paris because her daughter has been recruited into a cult and so she's trying to find and save her daughter. So it sounds like there's a lot going on in this book but they all sound like elements that I enjoy. This book is also freaking beautiful. Excited to get to this one. I haven't really heard much about it but the description really intrigued me when I was looking for my book of the month so I got it because I'm weak and I always pick two add-ons. <laughs> I also picked up Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen one day at Books A Million because it was on a sale and I really liked this cover. I thought it was really pretty and I think this is one of the few Jane Austens that I haven't read yet. So this one follows the Dashwood sisters whose father dies. Um, they do have relatives to take them in but the only way that they can really lead a good life is to marry well and so that is what they set out to do I guess. I really love Jane Austen. I love all of her books. I feel like they really translate remarkably well to modern times and modern issues and I think that's why she's such a beloved author author even still. Also she's really freaking funny. Like if you've never read a Jane Austen book, they are hilarious. They are so funny. You should definitely read one. Emma and Pride and Prejudice are definitely my favorites. I'm excited to read this one as well. Then we also have The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. This was the Page Turner Book Club pick for July. That live stream is on my channel if you are interested in checking it out. We had a really good discussion about this book. This book basically follows these two twin sisters. One decides to live her life white passing and she moves to California and marries a white man and abandons her family. And the other twin sister ends up moving back to her hometown with her daughter. And there's a lot of different elements to this book. It really discusses racism and the meaning of family and the meaning of happiness almost. This definitely is a really beautiful, moving, touching book. I rated this five stars. I really would recommend every Everybody read it. I really loved it. And then finally I have a small stack of like contemporary fiction books, um, at least as far as I can tell. The first one here I have is The Comeback by Ella Berman. This is a story following this actress I believe who at the height of her career and on the night of the Golden Globes where she was supposed to be getting an award, she disappears. She comes back multiple years later sober and with nothing left to lose. So when she's asked to present a Lifetime Achievement Award to this director that really controlled her childhood career and her life she realizes that she like has to stand up can't keep her secret any longer it sounds kind of like an abusive situation was going on probably inspired probably inspired by the whole Hollywood debacle going on. I can't remember that guy's name because I like to erase him from my mind, but you probably know what I'm referring to. Anyway, this book sounds um, honestly really good. I'm excited to check it out. Another beautiful cover. Book of the Month like picks the most beautiful books to feature, I swear. And then I have The Boyfriend Project by Vera Roshan. I don't know if that's how you pronounce her name either. This is a romance. So our main character Samaya goes viral on Twitter and realizes that she is being two-timed or three-timed by this man that she is dating and her and the other two girls that this man was dating form a really good friendship and they decide they're going to focus on themselves. So Samaya goes and develops the app that she's always wanted to make. Then she meets this guy at work that she starts falling for but that is not in the plan. So she has to decide like what's more important I think. Um, I've heard good things about this one. It sounds cute and I definitely am excited to pick it up when I'm in the mood for a light fluffy romance. I also have I Want to Be Where You Are by Christina Forrest. My lovely friend Reagan sent me to this book just because, because she is the sweetest person ever. I'm very excited for this. This is a YA contemporary romance. It follows our main character who is a dancer and she really wants to apply to dance at this, I think it's a school, yeah, this like prestigious dance school. Um, but her mother forbids her from doing it and so she and her neighbor end up going on this road trip to go um, audition for this school in secret and she doesn't really like her neighbor very much. I don't know why, exactly why he has to come but uh, I think it's gonna be really cute and I think he helps her kind of like break out of her shell and this just sounds like a cute light fluffy contemporary and I just need some of those in my life sometimes so very excited to get to this one thank you again Reagan. I also recently picked up Loveless by Alice Oseman. This is a story following Georgia during her first year of university. Georgia has always been somebody that has been really into fan fiction and love and romance rom-coms all that good stuff but she's never really found her person in real life and in college she begins to learn these terms asexual and aromantic 
like and feels like they may apply to her and so this is really a book about self-discovery and friendship and just life in general i really love this i gave this five stars this was the page turner book club pick for september that was over on mare's channel i will link the live stream down below so definitely check that out if you want to hear more of my thoughts but i also recently acquired this book and then finally the last book i have here is anxious people by frederick bachman so at the root of the issue this is about a hostage situation and a bank robber but i have heard that it's also about like humanity and hopefulness and how people can be good and evil at the same time much like a lot of other frederick bachman books i read bear town earlier this year and absolutely loved it so i'm very excited to get to this one i've honestly been hearing even better things about this one so i think this book is going to be amazing but probably going to make me sob which i'm ready for so i can't wait to get to this one so those are all the books that i'm going to be hauling today i don't feel like holding them up because that will probably be a disaster but we'll try and do the thumbnail of me holding them all but yeah thank you so much for watching this video i really appreciate you being here all relevant links will be in the description down below including links to all these books so definitely go check them out if anything sounded interesting to you also my social media is always in the link down below definitely go follow me on instagram that's where i'm most active other than on youtube also leave me a comment down below about what the most recent book you hauled was and give this video a like and subscribe if you're not already i really appreciate you hanging out with me today thank you so much for being here and i will see you in the next one bye